Hi guys, thanks for watching Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Today we'll check out this beast. It's the new E10 from Epax. This is their version of a low cost 4K mid size 3D resin printer. Let's dive straight into it. Okay, I need to be on my tippy toes to get into this one. All right, oh, it's the old box within a box. Wow, it's a big old printer. Nice bit of foam inset there. Just some standard quick start guide for the E6 and the E10 series. I'm assuming the E10 stands for 10 inches, but the size of the LCD screen, but I have to say it does seem a lot bigger than the, we've got a satin downstairs in the print lab and it feels a lot bigger than that. Now it says here that it weighs 15.5 kilos and I'll tell you, it's every part of that 15.5 kilos when you're getting it out of the box. They've used this plastic, I'm a huge fan of this plastic. It's not a great customer user experience to get this off. Okay, that's interesting. So it's got a standard sort of bag around as well for extra protection. Feel it a bit like a, you would a banana, I guess. This seems like multiple bits of foam. So if you can have a look in here, this is where they do tend to hide and store these things to keep them safe for transit. So you've got the power cord there. That's an interesting way to, to send FEP. I've never seen that one before in a little plastic tube. Looks like some sort of spare screw, a metal scraper, and a pair of gloves. And then in here is the AC adapter. They even sent me a purple e t-shirt. To be honest, I'll probably never wear that, but I'm sure someone around here will. What have we got here? That looks like a spare bit of tape for around the LCD. That's quite good. I don't, you don't often see a spare one of those. A lot of the guys will just use electrical tape. Now here's the, the big bill plate. You can see it's a nice brushed aluminium as most of these are. Interestingly though, it is not one piece. It's actually stuck onto, it looks like some sort of probably ABS plastic. And I can actually see the glue that they've used to stick that to that. Now, I said that this could be ABS before, but now I'm looking at it again and feeling it. It actually could be polycarbonate of some sort. Some filters, we always like the filters. I have to say, they have done a very, very good job in packing this. So, as I just discovered, this is this type where they're actually not attached, it's a separate thing. And of course, we won't be able to remove that until we lift up the Z axes. They put a piece of paper between the vat and the screen. That's good to see, just a little bit of extra protection there. It's got quite a small size screen there. We've got USB here on the side and ethernet. And this side, there's not a lot. There's just a standard cooling fan there for the electronics. Right around the back, there's just a the little point there for this AC adapter. Technology is the MSLA LCD. The XY resolution is 3840 by 2400. The Z axis resolution is 0.01 mil. Layer resolution is 0.01 to 0.1 millimeter. Printer size is 330 millimeters by 312 and it's 525 millimeters high. The build volume with the standard 8.9 4K mono screen is 192 by 120 by 250 millimeters and with the 10.1 5k mono screen it's 216 135 by 250 material 405 lcd uv resin and of course monocure 3d resin just to let you guys know i ordered direct from epax there was a delay and i got an email and it said you have three choices there's a problem with the lid. Now this lid, apparently, they're worried it's gonna to start to crack over time and we've actually noticed, as soon as we pulled it out, it already actually had a crack in it. They've obviously known there's an issue with the lid, so they gave me three choices. They said, one, ship as it is with the lid that's faulty and we will replace the lid when the new lid comes. Two, wait until the new lid, lid arrives, so in other words, there'll be a longer delay. Or three, cancel the order and get a refund essentially. But to be honest, it's very rarely that these sort of acrylic lids don't crack and these printers we've found. So if they've come up with a solution saying that the, the new one won't actually have an issue or won't crack, then I'd be very interested to see it. But for us, it was just about getting it here. So I think the next thing to do is we get this downstairs to John and he can get our resin into it and set it up and get it running and see what needs doing to get our resin to work perfectly in it. Thanks for that, Charlie. We're just gonna get into having a look at the EPAX 
E10, this one has the 8.9 inch monochrome screen. The build plate that uh, comes with it, I think is a common build plate that they use on both the 5K version, which has the 10.1 inch screen, and this one here, which is the 8.9 inch screen. So it doesn't really indicate just by looking at the build plate size, what the actual LCD screen size is. But once we take the cover off and have a look at the screen itself, we can see straight away that the screen itself is an 8.9 inch screen. So first things first, we need to raise the Z axis. We need to get everything plugged in and turned on. We're, and we're just gonna flick the power switch on. So now we'll wait for the Chai2 box firmware to boot up and we'll go into tool, select manual, select 10 millimeters and press that a few times until the Z axis raises up far enough that we can take the VAT out and inspect everything. We can see from this design that the Z axis is very rigid has a couple of very sturdy looking linear bearings. But the difference here is it's using an injected molded plastic for most of the parts that you would normally expect to be aluminium. Now, this plastic is very strong and it's very rigid, so you don't typically get the same problems you, you would for regular plastic um, vats where you would tighten up the, the FEP and you'd find the vat would start to bow inwards. It looks like it's already got the FEP installed. I'm gonna have a quick look and make sure that there's no issues with the FEP on the bottom of the vat. Sounds like it's nice and tight. All the screws look like they're in place and not loose. And it looks like it uses a metal plate to hold the, the FEP in place, which is good. And we'll have a look at the screen itself, make sure there's no imperfections on there. The design by the looks of it could probably be upgraded to the 5K 10.1 inch screen. There's a bezel in here that looks like it's removable. The screen itself doesn't look like it can move. There's no points where it bows inwards when I press down, which is good. It doesn't look like it's gonna move, so that's fine. Next thing we do is probably give the FEP a bit of a clean down. So I'm just gonna lightly mist the surface of the FEP, wipe off any dust or debris that's on there from the packaging, and we'll do the same on the inside. Just make sure the surface of the FEP has no holes in it. Just a little bit of an indent there, but I don't think that's gonna generate into a hole. We can put that vat back in place. Now the reason I'm putting the vat back in place before I level is because I'm using the surface of the FEP sheet to determine the best Z level for when I home it. So now we're gonna grab the build plate and we need to find the appropriate Allen key to loosen the four screws that are on the side of the build plate. We'll just loosen all four of those until I'm able to move it. Do the same on the other side. So now it's loose, put that on there. Lock the build plate onto the Z axis, making sure that that's pushed all the way forward. Reasonably tight, make sure that can move. And now we're gonna go into um, the menu and select home. Now, if you have a look around the back of the printer here, there's a piece of metal here, and that's going to interrupt an optical switch down the bottom here. And as soon as it does that, it knows it's at the home position. So you'll notice that the EPAX 3D E10 has a reasonably large size compared to the Elegoo Satin. And I'd say the main reason for that is that their design is looking forward towards people being able to upgrade their printers. If you had a design that was as small as the Elegoo Satin, you wouldn't be able to fit a 10.1 inch mono screen in that. There's not enough room, whereas on this there is. So the next thing we'll do is we'll make sure that we've got the plate down flat on the FEP sheet now that it's homed. And as I'm tightening the screws very slowly and doing it diagonally, I'll make sure that I'm applying a little bit of pressure, not a lot, but a little bit of pressure down on the plate to make sure it's flat against the FEP. So let's start with this side here and start tightening them up. Go across the diagonally over to the other side, do the same, go to this one, do the same, just lightly to start with. And then we start again, getting tighter and tighter as I go. Now the weight of the build plate itself is certainly helping to keep it level. Now you've got to be fairly careful with any kind of injected mold or plastic. You do not want to make these screws too tight because you will crack the plastic. So that should do that. Now that we've homed that, we can then raise the bed up. So let's have a look through the menu system. So if we look from left to right, we've got the top option here, which is to control the Z axis for homing and moving it up and down. The second option is to do an exposure test, and this will create a box pattern on the LCD screen just to see if it's working properly. 
The set z equals zero is actually non-functional. If you click that, it'll tell you home first, then move the z-axis to the bottom. So it actually doesn't do anything. The homing is actually done manually through here. So then we go back and you've got the stop option. Um, that basically stops everything from happening. It'll, if the z-axis is moving, it stops it. The clean option will expose the entire LCD, LCD screen to UV light. So if you have a thin film of um, resin in the bottom of the vat, selecting the clean option will let you harden that resin which then lets you peel it off and it just makes it a little easier to clean out the vat. Personally, I don't use that option. So if we go back to the main menu, it'll show you the network option. Now the network option is a new thing. That's not normally available in the Tudor Box printers. This one clearly does have that as an option for network connection connectivity. It has got a network interface on the side of it. If you have an ethernet cable you can plug into the network, it should automatically assign it an IP address and connect up. It has got Wi-Fi password and a remote SSID. At this stage, without reading the manual, there's no way I can tell you how to set up Wi-Fi on here. That's if this has actually got a Wi-Fi module installed. The service will probably just show you the details of the EPAX website and their phone number. Language lets you switch between Chinese and English, which we don't want to do. Calibration, this allows you to calibrate the uh, touch screen on the uh, printer itself. So essentially you'll be touching exactly where that little X is to calibrate that point there. And then you touch the next one and then the next one. Go confirm and now that's calibrated. So you shouldn't have to use that option ever. The print option will show you whatever files are on the uh, USB stick. Now the printer does actually come with a little USB stick, this one here, the sand disk. Not sure what's on there, so let's find out. So there's no supplied models on the USB stick to be able to print as a test model. So we need to put some files onto that stick. So let's do that now. All right, so within Chidu Box, we need to add the EPAX E10. We go into settings, we go up to add printer, and you'll see under EPAX, we have the E1089 mono. So 89 means 8.9 inch mono screen. So that's the one we would select and add. So once that's been added, you should see under the machine settings, the resolution of the LCD, which is 3840 by 2400. Under the print option here, we need to add profiles for the different types of resin that we're using. 25 seconds for the bottom exposure sounds very high. So I might bring that back to about 18 seconds. Leave that at two seconds for the regular exposure time. Bottom layer count four is fine. If we look at the defaults here, we can see that the bottom lift distance and the lifting distance is seven millimeters. That should generally be enough. If you find that you've got a model that's got a lot of surface area, you may need to make that about nine millimeters just to give that extra lift so that it can actually separate from the FEP. The bottom lift speed of 40 millimeters a minute is fine. Lifting speed of 60 is fine. That's fairly typical of a lot of the printers. You can probably wind that back to 50 if you have a very complex model that's got a lot of surface area. And the retract speed of 150 is fine. So the next thing we'll do is add a new profile for the resin that we're using. In this case, we're gonna be using Big Vat Gray. I'll create a new profile by clicking on the plus button here, edit the profile name, and we'll call it Big Vat Gray. The infill we're not going to worry about, GK don't know what need to worry about, and we'll turn on anti-aliasing. All right, so the next thing we need to do is bring in the appropriate model. When I'm printing these models, quite often I find that the very thin vertical bars work better if I rotate the model about 20 degrees, just slightly off kilt. So then we click on slice, and then we click on save, and we save it to the USB stick that we put in earlier. So let's grab our five litre gray of big vat resin. Very important that the five litre bottles have a good one minute worth of shaking before you use them every single time. If you miss it once or shake it just a little bit, the proportions of the chemicals that make up our resin will be out of whack. And then you'll find the rest of the bottle won't behave the same way as the first pour that you did. So I'm gonna pour it up just to the edge of the angle inside that vat there. So the best way to get rid of the bubbles that are on the top is to grab a tiny little torch like this. And when you run it over the bubbles, you can see that they disappear. So don't stay in one spot and start burning the resin. Just keep moving it around until all those bubbles are gone. So surface bubbles are actually quite bad in that it leaves little holes 
on the base of the model that attaches to the bill plate. So we need to make sure that they're all gone. What I tend to do is wait usually about 15 minutes until all the bubbles have risen to the top and then I hit it with the torch. Now that we're ready to print and we've gotten rid of all the bubbles, let's go into the print menu option and select the model that we just saved to the USB stick. We can see a preview of what the model will look like. So then we click play and let the magic begin. Now looking at the, uh, the size of the bill plate, you can see it's got quite a bit of volume to it. So when this bill plate drops into the resin, even though I put a, probably a, only about five mil of resin in the bottom there, it'll come up quite high. So you really need to be aware of that fact because if you put just that little bit too much resin in, it will overflow. So if you've got a very large model, you will have to come back to the printer and pour more resin in as the model gets larger and larger. Now you would have heard that separation sound that you get when the model is being pulled away from the FEP sheet. That's actually a good sound. You want to be able to hear that, but you don't want it to be too loud. So while that's printing, we're just going to put the cover back on and we'll come back to it when it's done. And we can see that it's going to take 36 minutes in this case. Now that our calibration model is finished, we're going to have a look at it and see whether the exposure needs to be increased or decreased. And I'm going to make sure that I put the aluminium trays that we sell straight into the tray here so that it doesn't drip on anything and we'll have a look at the model there and we're going to have to remove the model from the surface of the plate. So we'll do that very carefully with the edge of a sharp plastic scraper. And then I'll give this a quick clean off in the resin away. So this will be our dirty resin away that we start off in just to get that, the bulk of the resin off there. So I'm now going to put that into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now that the ultrasonic cleaner is finished, we'll have a closer examination of it, get as much of the resin away off there and we'll have a, a quick spray using a bit of IPA just to get that excess resin away off there. So if we have a close look at the printout, it's actually not too bad. We can see that the text is not running into each other. The CTRL-V that's uh, in there is a little bit closed in and the bridge is actually pretty good. So I could probably get away with about 1.8 seconds for the normal duration, bring it down from two seconds and that should work fine. We can see that there's a bit of an elephant foot that means that the base layer time is a little bit too high. You will always have a little bit of a elephant foot on the bottom, but that one is excessive. But you don't want to make it too low because then it won't attach to the bill plate. But that attached to the bill plate quite well. You can see the, uh, the scratch lines that are on the surface of the aluminium of the bill plate, and they actually help the model stick to the bill plate. So now back in Chitu box, we're going to bring in a couple of models that I'm printing for a customer at the moment. We've got a Mandalorian helmet that we're doing and there's some parts that need to stick to the side of the helmet that we need to print. So I'll bring those in. So now back in the print dialog, we're going to change the exposure time from two seconds down to 1.8 seconds. And we're going to change the base layer time to 15 seconds. And then we'll slice it. We're going to put the USB stick back into the printer. I'm going to put the bill plate back on and go and select the model that we saved onto the USB stick and start printing. We'll come back to this in a number of hours and see how well that printed. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you found that informative. All the settings for this printer will be on our website under the printer settings section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.